Hey out there, this is Monday, November 7th, 2016, and it's just about uh, 9.26 in the morning here in Northern California. And uh, I, I just wanted to put out an emergency message to everybody and uh, tell you that uh, if, you, uh, if you want a few things, then you need to vote for Donald Trump. And I'm going to go through a few of those things right now. I compiled a list here. If you want lower taxes, lower rent, lower overall cost of living, less crime, less war, less debt, fewer abortions, fewer drug addicts, less prostitution, more prosperity, more security, more freedom, more safety, and an overall greater America, then uh, you should vote for Donald Trump. Conversely, you should vote for Hillary if you want uh, more of all those things and less of the, uh, the good things. If you want America to go down the tubes, if you want the New World Order cabal to get their way, the establishmentarians, and that's Democrats and Republicans, because I could care less if Donald Trump was a Democrat or Republican. I'd feel the same way about him. He's the closest thing to JFK we've had. And in, uh, in this last, uh, what has it been now? 50, uh, killed in 63, so 50, 53 years. In 53 years, he's the closest thing to JFK we've had. And again, I wouldn't care if JFK had been a Republican. I'd speak just as fondly about the man because he confronted the establishment and that's exactly what Donald Trump is doing and when I see all the people that hate Donald Trump I say man oh man you know what this is the this is the guy we need okay when I see the Pope hate Donald Trump when I see the Bushes hate Donald Trump when I see the Clintons hate Donald Trump when I see all these neocons hating Donald Trump all these libtards out there hating Donald Trump then I say he's the man that we need to elect, okay? I don't understand how anybody at this point in history cannot see this truth. And it just, it scares me, it really does. And I've pointed this out in previous videos that I'm scared. Nevertheless, you know, I'm not to be anxious because I believe in the Bible, I believe in the scriptures, and I believe that the only thing we are to be anxious for is the return of Jesus. But having said that, I believe that we all need to do our best to fight the good fight and to confront the forces of evil as it's written in the book of Ephesians. If you read in Ephesians, I believe it's chapter 6, where it talks about our battle not being against flesh and blood. You know, this is why we can't hate other people, when, even when they're wrong, when they're blind, even when you think they're evil. We are called on to still care about them and hold our hand out to the bitter end, just assuming that they are perhaps deceived and that, you know, like it's written, you know, about the prodigal son and, uh, you know, he was deceived into squandering his wealth and, uh, you know, on wild living and et cetera. So, you know, we aren't to condemn others. We, we always judge, but in a, in a discerning manner. You know, you can't judge in a condemning manner. But we all have to make judgment calls about people's behavior. And if their fruits are rotten and they stink to high heavens, you've got to call them out on that. Again, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of this world in dark places. Because Satan, to this day, is in control of the affairs on earth. And this is through a surreptitious kind of manner, uh, a clandestine kind of manner, because a lot more is coming out uh, that these people don't want to come out about the Clinton's connection to satanic worship, Luciferianism. Uh, Hillary Clinton won't bring up the name of Jesus. She doesn't want to hear about Jesus. She doesn't want to talk about Jesus. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, she's happy to make friends with that guy. What's it, Robert Byrd? That he was a high dragon or something in the KKK. And then they're pointing Donald fingers at Donald Trump, saying that he's associated with the KKK when he disavowed any association with David Duke from the get-go. This is how these people operate. Look up a guy named Saul Alinsky. That's S A U L A L I N S K Y. Look up Saul Alinsky. And uh, look up uh, another woman, let's see, uh, 
uh, what's her name, the uh, the eugenicist lady that um, uh, that the, uh, Hillary Clinton speaks very fondly about. This woman that believes in aborting the black people and all this. So if there's a racist among the two candidates, it's certainly Hillary Clinton. The Democratic Party has deep roots to the KKK. You've got to look into this stuff. Now, like I said, uh, you don't condemn an entire party because a lot of people affiliated with the party are certainly not racist. So I'm not condemning the entire party. And of course, I speak fondly of JFK, who of course was a Democrat. So we've all got to understand the, 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 uh, the deceit out there, the duplicity of these people and how they operate and how they want you to look over here when really you're supposed to look over here and this is how the news the main what they call the mainstream media operates they say oh focus on this issue that issue that when really it's just like in the wizard of oz when really what we need to do is look behind the curtain and when you look behind the curtain what you discover is the money masters these are the ones on top it's not the president of the united states that's on top Believe it or not, there's already a woman in charge of America because it's Janet Yellen who's in charge, the chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank. This is the most powerful person, not only in America, but in the world because America sets the trend for the rest of the world. You notice that as America's been going down the tubes for decades now, we see the rest of the world suffer and we see this European Union that has popped up and, you know, under the pretext of well, you know, power in numbers and all this and, you know, join this union and all this. But really, all this stuff has satanic roots. And we've got to fundamentally understand the satanic roots, the Luciferian roots of these people. And how this is a spiritual battle. It's a battle be between good and evil. And uh, you know what? I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow, and I don't think anybody else does. Well, I think... Uh, there's a few people that are going to guess. They're going to stick their necks out and they're going to gamble and wager on who's going to win this election, but I'm not going to go that far. All I know is that the good guy eventually is going to win. So regardless if Donald Trump wins this thing or not, and again, if he wins this thing, the battle has just begun because he's going to find a lot of resistance because the establishmentarians are entrenched and it's going to be like pulling teeth to make any changes in this country. Okay, and what are the changes that we want to see? They're the kind of changes that I already mentioned. We want to see poverty diminish. Okay, we want to see the standard of living rise. We want to see a greater sense of security and safety and freedom and liberty. That's what we want. We want people to be happy, to be content, to feel like there's hope for tomorrow, like, like there's hope to be uh, a homeowner again because that hope has been taken away and I know that as a matter of fact I've been in the real estate business for a long time and I know I had my real estate license for four years I'm very interested in this matter and I learned a lot of stuff in real estate class and I learned that until recently Amer uh, to California had a majority of homeowners and this is the greatest metric greatest gauge uh, for prosperity is home ownership because if you can't afford to purchase your own home you will never be free do you understand you will always be a, a slave to the landlord you will be, always be a slave to paying rent a rent slave and so other people across the country haven't realized how pernicious this is yet but they will and I, I pay a, t a lot of attention to this real estate business again because I know the tie between home ownership and freedom and safety and security and prosperity. This is something a lot of people ha haven't realized yet. But if you read Adam Smith's book, the famous economist from over 200 years ago, his famous book, The Wealth of Nations, you will understand the same things I'm talking about here. That we've been duped into believing that, you know, uh, things that are valuable. Uh, that, you know, that make a nation wealthy are things like the gold and the silver and the oil and all the assets and all this, the material things, but it's not. The greatest wealth of any nation is its workforce, a willing workforce, the labor, okay? This is what makes a nation wealthy. And it's very logical and sensible when you, when you think about it because nothing gets done without labor. This is often, this is common, often uneducated labor, okay? 
So while education has its place, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking down to the educated people out there, all I'm saying is we have to be honest and face the reality that we need everyday people. We need the truck drivers. We need the farm workers. We need the factory workers. We need all these people that have absolutely no status in the world, but these people are crucial, absolutely imperative to the welfare of society as a whole, to your welfare and my welfare, his welfare, her welfare, all of our welfare is entwined in the workforce, a, a, having an, a, a, a willing workforce. And when we lose a willing workforce, all you've got is you've got a third world country where people have lost hope. And that's what we want to avoid happening. So if we can avoid the rest of the nation going the direction California has gone, you would do yourselves a great service. Understand this, how they have stolen our wealth is through the home ownership. This is where Bill Clinton comes in, Slick Willie. How, you know, people still, to the day he left office, he had this huge amount of people that supported him because they saw their housing prices, you know, double or triple or whatever. And that made them very happy. That was the majority of Americans at that time. And to this day, there's still a majority of Americans that are homeowners, okay? But the trend is going to sweep across the country. If you let Hillary Clinton in there, and she's going to put Bill Clinton in charge of economic affairs, and economics and politics are hand in glove. It's all one and the same. And again, I pointed out that Janet Yellen is actually the most powerful person, not only in America, but in the world. So if you want to protect home ownership, if you want to see more people enter prosperity through home ownership, then you need to vote for Donald Trump. Okay, that's it. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Okay, this is a matter of fact that we are losing home ownership across the country. We've lost it in California. The hope of all these native Californians has been dashed. All they can do is hope to pay their rents till they're, you know, too old to work. And then they need social welfare, okay? That's the way it's going to be. So we're all going to be dependent. So it's inevitable that your taxes will have to go up if we keep these kind of people in office that are just stealing the wealth of the nation, okay? Then you can expect your tax. It's inevitable unless we're just going to say, we're going the way of Mexico. We're going to have people living in dirt huts. We can't have building codes anymore, okay, because people are just going to say, you know what? It's either I build a shelter, a makeshift shelter out of wood and junk I salvaged, or I die out here. And you can, and you can incarcerate me if you want, but again, that's going to raise your taxes because it costs over $50,000 a year to keep one person in jail for a year. So you understand how this thing works. All we've been told is lies, okay, and deceit, duplicity, and uh, and if we don't wake up to that reality and and you know and face the music, you know, wake up and smell the the steaming pile of maggot-ridden uh, excrement, okay, this 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 cesspool of 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 of, of foul, uh, disgusting uh, treason that has taken over this country, then we've got